in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed this song has been a chord for me in the spirit. There's something about receiving specific songs for seasons. There are many songs by the grace of God that we have received in this place, but there's just a strange anointing upon this song. It's, it's like a call and response. It compels something within you to respond to the heavens. I've tried and tried to stop singing this song, but it will not leave. Is a chant in the spirit. It does something to my spirit. It does something to my spirit. Yeah. 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 Help us worship team. One more time, all the instruments, our voices, and our hands lifted. Yeah. <speaking in Spanish> Help me worship team. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy. Just the voices. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
tonight and cry for a visitation Lord I have come to feast at your table I have come to feast at your table we have come to draw strength tonight strength for the journey ahead Hallelujah. Spirit of the Living God, we ask you tonight invade our lives do something remarkable in our lives tonight turn our lives around turn our lives around turn our lives around turn our lives around hallelujah hallelujah god bless you please be seated good evening everyone your life will never be the same in the name of jesus Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. We have a lot to do tonight. And we're trusting God to be able to go so far. Every moment in his presence. Let me tell you one of the reasons why the presence of God should be greatly desired. In his presence, there is not only liberty. In his presence, there is wisdom. In his presence, there is understanding. It's in his presence he reveals to us the mystery behind the happenings in our lives. And he shows us the system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apologize for that. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is going to bless us in no small way. I like our hearts to really, really be opened. The Lord wants to speak to us by the power of his spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord put something in my spirit that I'd like us to write down that I think will be very important and it will set the pace tonight. Um, there are so many people outside. As we always say, you are part of us. And um, I know that the Lord brought you to bless you. And do not let distance distract you. I see people standing with something to write. I want you to know we really appreciate the sacrifice. And um, this that you are doing will speak in your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when God gave man... The mandate to dominate. The word dominion means sovereign control. Sovereign control. And every religion, every movement promises one thing. Dominion. The fear of man has been his inability to completely control certain situations and circumstances please i want you to listen the things we cannot control are the things that bring fear to our lives so people fear poverty for instance because of um, an effect it seems to be able to bring to our lives and we cannot do anything about it we fear death we fear guns because we think they can do something to us 
we fear failure because it does something to us every time man is unable to control a process it brings fear it brings a sense of subjugation so every movement that has come through history and civilization promises to lead man to a pathway where we'll be able to access dominion but we know that there is no true dominion and authority outside of christ in genesis 1 26 the bible says and elohim said let us make man in our own image it says let them have sovereign control dominion hallelujah what what is happening to you here every time is the process that will bring you into true dominion i told us again and again that dominion is not a wish dominion is not an impartation dominion is a reaction something happens to your life that leads to an end called dominion hallelujah write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life something i do not know is responsible i said for you to write it this way so that every time you are reading it you can personalize it and it can create the effect that will birth change something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life the second thing i want you to write is this something i am aware of but have not believed is also responsible for my limitation something i am aware of but have not believed is responsible for my limitation there is something i am aware of there is an information a revelation i am aware of i'm not ignorant of it i'm aware of it but my refusal to believe it has brought limitation to my life number three something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon underline consistently acted upon something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation these three factors have limited us in no small way something we do not know is responsible for the limitations in our lives two something we know an information we have come across but we have not chosen to believe is also responsible for the limitations in our lives number three something we have believed but have not consistently it may be that you have acted upon it but you have not consistently acted upon see the danger is that any of these three categories will produce the same result see how frustrating it is are we together now so we have three people here one who is completely ignorant and he's not even aware he's ignorant his miracle starts when he's aware that he's ignorant. Not even when the solution comes. The awareness that you need help is already deliverance in itself. Let me tell you how Satan destroys people. He keeps you in ignorance. Are we together now? And he closes every door that can even make you aware you are ignorant. That's the first person. His end is predictable. Number two is the one who is he's not ignorant he's had access to the information that can change him or her but the person has refused to believe you see i found out that it's not what you hear that changes you it's what you choose to believe and live by so this person here 
has all the information has read all the books has gone for all the seminars comes for koinonia every week and you will think that he would produce certain kinds of results right the third person not only is not ignorant not only has believed but has refused to consistently act now the terrible thing is you would think the first two should be better than the first person but their results will all come out the same hallelujah that's why the interesting thing about god is when you start working with him you have to go all the way to see your progress you can't take two steps with god and expect you will see any remarkable progress you've had you, you've got to go all the way and then you'll see that there is progress tonight i want to teach on strategic kingdom influence strategic kingdom influence this teaching will bless you it will change your life strategic kingdom influence i want to teach us a major tool for kingdom advancement in the 21st century strategic kingdom influence one of the please look up especially those of us who are pastors ministries fellowships and groups i think i was uh, i don't know if it was the school of ministry students we we're having a discussion yesterday and i was telling them a true shepherd listen please a true shepherd must build people intentionally there's no lecturer who comes to the lecture hall guessing what he thinks the students should become are we together every like the students don't even know what they should become many times a few may know but the lecturer is only a lecturer because he is privy to an information he knows what the students should become if they diligently stay under his tutelage when jesus came he knew what he wanted the disciples to become he wanted them to become apostles envoys advocates of his ideology and he knew exactly what to do it's a terrible thing when a pastor is confused about the path of spiritual progress of the members meaning that he doesn't really know what builds the people he's hoping and sadly i say this and i'm challenging especially those of us who are men of god you don't sit down and just guess what to teach people on saturday night or sunday early in the morning you just think and say what have i not talked about character people are misbehaving in my church you now run a hammer on character and then you find out that uh, people need to learn on miracles and then you go and teach on miracles your growth will not be constructive every pastor ought to develop people in five areas number one their spiritual lives these are just um, additions that I think I should communicate before we go into our discussion tonight. Number one, our spiritual life. Any pastor, any leader that cannot guide the people God has committed to him to really know God, to come to a point where they can hear the voice of God, to come to a point where they conform to the image of the Christ, to come to a point where the average member is passionate about the things of the kingdom no matter what else you teach people if you don't bring them to a point of addiction and love and passion for god then they are not growing hallelujah yes where they seek his face where they love him genuinely not where they use him where they love him so that's the first area and that involves them being born again not just being healed they have to be saved pastors make sure the congregation of the people you are leading among other things and before other things their salvation is secured i don't care what else happened in that church if the people are not saved they are not growing praise the lord they must be saved and established in righteousness where your members become people of conviction let me tell you something i have seen congregations where the level of revelation that comes from the preacher to them is very low but i respect those congregations because the little the man of god knows he has brought his members to a point of conviction 
I'm irritated by an assembly that does not have values, spiritual convictions. It's better to be wrong about something so that even when you change, you know what you left. Not that you are there today, you think divine healing is scriptural. Tomorrow you are not sure. Today you think prosperity is good. And then your man of God comes and him too, he's not sure. There are times you see pastors oscillating. You go for a conference and hear something and you come back. Ship it to your congregation and teach them. Only for you to grow two weeks later and find out that you wouldn't have brought that revelation that way. And then the members are hearing a lot of things, but they are not growing hallelujah number two every true shepherd must be able to build people's finances i'm absolutely convinced that a man of god who does not pay attention to the financial well-being of his congregation is not only a wicked man of god he's not only a wicked man of god but he's a dangerous man of god you know why because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. If you want to get the heart of a congregation focused towards God, there are certain things in their lives that can really become distractions. There is no how you want a man to serve God, lie down, you want him to give you three or four or five hours of his life, whereas he knows that his rent is due. Are we together now? And then it is also wicked. Honestly, this is my proposition. I think it is really wicked for a man of God to stand up and then say, oh, how many people are going to give one, one million naira? I was telling the school of ministry students. And then you have people come out and then they are, they, are, they are offering. Now, I don't care whether the church is using their offering or not. These people give offerings every week. Even if it's five naira, it left them. Is that true? They pay their tithe. And then the minister of the gospel in turn is not empowering them. And so they are broke, they are failures in their offices. They are at the lower levels. They can't do nothing. They don't have options. They've not grown to a point where they can be able to say, look, I, can, I want to go to church. Somebody cover for me. No influence. Sometimes... We, we teach what we call a replacement theology where we can use one dimension of the kingdom to replace the need for another. It doesn't exist. It's error. And a man of God can be so bold in error and mislead people. Many pastors who don't pay attention to the finances of their members are doing well themselves. They are doing well because they are offering spiritual value and the members sow into their lives. The members maybe pay their rent some of the pastors collect salary so i can teach you all kinds of things and immediately after the service my dinner is secured i'm going to go and eat but will you eat a good shepherd does not march on his sheep he lays down his life for his sheep you see this is why many congregations are um, is a beehive of frustrated people there are issues people have that will not allow them to grow number three every true shepherd should teach people and guide them along the area of excellence in leadership how to excel career wise how to excel family wise Every church, every congregation is a unit of family. You cannot have an irresponsible father, a very wicked mother, come to a church. What do you think that bad father will become as a HOD? He will translate his understanding about fatherhood. And that's what he's going to use to lead the department. Are we together now? Every arm robber came from somewhere. He didn't fall from a tree. Are we together? Every prostitute or harlot came from somewhere. All those who are making a mess of society came from family. And a platform like this, the church is an institution that influences the mindset of people. Gives them very 
very scriptural perspectives on leadership how do you excel in your place of work it matters to god how do you excel in your endeavor it matters to god how do you excel in your business how do you do it right number what now number four every pastor must teach his congregation on principles of relationships relationships are everything in this kingdom your breakthrough comes through relationships the tragedy in your life comes through relationships jesus understood this he didn't he didn't play with relationships We lose opportunities because we do not know how to master relationships. We lose destiny helpers. Money is not everything as important as it is. One ability to maximize a quality relationship will give you what one billion will not give you. Relationships. Hallelujah. Number five. Every pastor must be able to teach his congregation how to be agents of national transformation. Every pastor must be able to teach his member life applicable teachings. Teachings they can take outside of the confines of the church back to society and begin to shape cultures and change systems with it listen let me tell you the churches that command influence in every territory are the churches whose impact are felt even sociologically it's not just by buying rice or giving people sewing machine or or you know uh, buying pot or killing cow those things are important but it's not just about doing things it's about institutionalizing a mindset within a territory so the church becomes noted everybody within that territory benefits there are so many people benefiting from koinonia the national union of road transport workers are benefiting rental services benefiting mtn glow airtel benefiting are we together now there are many people who may not be Christians but will fight to protect the continuity of Koinonia because they can see how it translates to the well-being of their own lives. So you build people intentionally. You don't just sit down and say, I got up and I think I feel like saying this today. And then people jump. And then at the end of the service, you ask the people, what did you gain? And the person tells you, honestly, me too, I don't know, but my, my spirit picked something. You are not going to grow that way. I assure you. Did you know, did you know that I've taught us here, it's not your intention that becomes your reality, but your conviction. You want to be great. But something about your belief will limit you. You want to be greatly anointed. But there is something you must know. I'm telling you, you will thank me in the years to come for these fruits. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. More and more. More and more. when you grow spiritually and otherwise it becomes there is something there is a name god gives this kind of people he calls them a delightsome land you know what it is a delightsome a likable personality 
something about your transition in the spirit creates an effect in this realm and so you are well desired well desired i was telling the school of ministry um, students yesterday that the project this project you see called koinonia the benefit of koinonia will be experienced in the next 10 to 20 years not now hallelujah my target is people from ages 0 to 45 outside 45 you can join but the target that that generation of individuals is what we want to target in the next 20 years many people you see now 70 years etc in business in politics no matter how they want to hold on to power many of them would have transited it will now be our turn hallelujah so it's a project just like satan destroyed america when god's generals were there preaching what was he doing to, they forgot about their children and the devil just targeted them from 25 years they were there in the crusade and the children were they left the children and the wives at home because they felt those people did not need change so the men of god were preaching and the devil said i, I give up on these ones but he started growing with them channel o came MTV came, right? All kinds of things came. They grew. They didn't train them. They grew. They shaped their ideology. They are the ones today who are the leaders, prime ministers, heads of banks, heads of institutions. And so a system runs. I mean, they play the world like a chess, but it's going to change. I know we don't look like it yet. I assure you, you quote me i've been saying certain things that i'll keep saying we will all be great and the best part is that we will know ourselves that's what will happen don't trivialize the power of the holy spirit just give him time he will surprise you give him time write this word down let's begin our teaching strategic kingdom influence um let's define influence very quickly i have a lot to talk about and i want us to finish very fast amen and amen and amen influence what is influence the capacity to have an effect influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character development and behavior of something or someone Please make sure you are writing. The capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone is called influence. When you sustain an ability to create an effect in somebody's behavior, somebody's character, and his development, we call that influence. Number two, Influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma. Influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma. Shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way. Change mindsets. So, the ability and the platform to be able to change mindsets, shape opinions, and move others to act in a certain way is called influence. How we need this. One of the keys to kingdom advance in the 21st century is not just evangelism. It's called influence. And I add kingdom influence. We have a mandate as a church. Listen, listen. We are not just here roaming around, wondering what to do with our lives. There is a mandate upon us. That mandate is found in Genesis 1, 26. Help us, media. Genesis 1, 26, Matthew 6, verse 10, and Mark 16, 15 and 16. Genesis 1, 26, Matthew 6, verse 10, Mark 16, 15 and 16. 
it reveals our mandate as the church every one of you under the sound of my voice is part of those to make this mandate come to pass and God said Genesis 1 26 let us make man after our image our likeness and let them have sovereign control dominion sovereign control the power of legislature the ability to extend an influence over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle and over all the earth over every creeping thing and everything that creeps upon the earth we are god's managers the state of the earth today is a revelation of our failure our inability to manage this domain of god's kingdom We have a mandate as a church. Matthew 6 verse 10. Everyone read. Jesus was teaching this in what we have believed to be the Lord's prayer. One to read. Thy kingdom come. How? By your will being done in earth. Exactly as it is in heaven. Listen. Heaven is the way it is for two reasons. One, the presence of God. Two, a culture. A culture. A culture. There is a culture that makes heaven heaven and god is saying when you when we pray this is god's desire that his kingdom his sovereign rule will find expression in this our sphere in the exact way in other words reproduce the culture of heaven in your environment it's a mandate and then he further expands on how to do it mark chapter 16 mark 16 15 to 16 are you there media please help us you're giving us mark 10 you have to correct it please mark 16 15 okay and he said unto them read on please one to read Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hold on. The first assignment is go. That means he expects a body that is moving. Action. Go. Then he tells you the strategy. He says, he didn't say go around the street. He says go ye into. Enter a system called cosmos. Don't just go around. Thank God for sharing tracks and all of that. But he gives you an idea. His system of invasion. I want you to enter a strata of human activities. And when you are establishing that strata, he said, preach the gospel not to every human being. Not to every human being. To every creature. Creature. Everything alive should feel the impact of the gospel. Communicate that influence and that ideology. Write this down. Our mandate as a church, not koinonia, I mean the global church, the ecclesia. Our mandate as the church is to establish the lordship of Christ. I will keep drumming this till we get it again and again. Establish the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men. That's the first dimension. To establish the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men and the instrument we use to produce this is called the gospel the gospel the gospel is not just a message the gospel is an instrument the end of it is to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men number two to extend this is my concern tonight to extend the culture and authority of heaven across every territory and strata of human activity i'll take it again to extend the culture and authority of heaven to extend the culture and the authority of heaven across every territory and strata or sphere of human activity listen if all we do is establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's important but we must go the extra mile 
to make sure that every strata of human activity also come under the influence of the Christ. Look up, please. Let me tell you where our lukewarm attitude came from. Our lukewarm attitude came from preachers who in an attempt to make us have the perspective of eternity in view have trivialized the necessity of the church today. Are we together now? So in a bid to teach us and prepare us for rapture, teach us about the second coming of Christ, etc., etc., right? We, we push it to the limit. And then we give people an idea like every other thing is a waste every other thing don't don't worry about building no house don't build any business don't do anything is unnecessary just make sure you love god and remain rapturable and we say that to justify and then we find out that after 20 years jesus has not come but your child has come but your bills have come these are the ones that are coming jesus that you are preparing for is coming that's true but he has not come but your bills have arrived right the need for um your responsibility has arrived we have to be careful the way we teach people things many of us are well-meaning people but we are victims of an ideology that must be balanced i'm always obsessed with balance of course we have the other side of the equation people who are so careless about the things of god they are just carnal all they want is cars houses oh this and that and that they are, they are so carnal those kinds of people will go to hell when jesus comes because they are obviously not living with eternity in view but there is a balance everyone say there is a balance there is a balance so we have an assignment to extend the culture when promise was you know talking to us i'm sure some of you were shocked looking at him you cannot imagine that a gentleman like this was keeping dreadlocks and wearing earrings all around when he came to zaria you think he just wanted to wear it he was reacting to something within him somebody told him that appearance or that state was equal to manhood and masculinity and so he was a victim of his mindset what happened to him not just deliverance but what happened to him was a translation another idea an alternative structure came upon his life see you don't change people by just flogging them insulting them castigating them or telling them do this when you tell somebody do this the person will not do it he's reacting to something within him if you don't change that's why they bring people out of prison and they say make sure you don't steal again and you see the person standing they say sign here and he's signing one month later they say ah they say honestly this time around this and that and that because they they don't create programs that influence the minds of the people you cast away that spirit and change their paradigm and then you win them amen let me discuss our mandate and the 21st century i really want this to be relevant to us the mandate of the church i think one of the confusion in the church right now is how to be able to weave kingdom living and the reality of our changing society whether you believe it or not times are changing say times are changing the only constant thing in life is change the 21st century has brought in a lot of changes a lot of changes changes in the way even some of us who are young met certain things that we can even relate to and say ah things have changed we are not so old like that but at least we can look back and be able to say yesterday there was xyz today is, is now obsolete not to talk of our parents and our fathers and mothers here they can tell you a lot of things we have no idea some of our little ones here don't know what a typewriter looks like some of them when they grow i'm sure they will not even know what a stove looks like i'm sure by the time they are adults will be using e-cookers <laughs> oh don't limit the mind of man believe me who knew that somebody will create something as as much as 
I mean hundreds of tons and then lift it up in the air just like that even you you can't hang in the air yet plane that is heavier than you can rise up in the air so don't don't trivialize the power of the mind cultures have changed the interests of people have changed perspectives have changed technology has changed a lot of things technology has changed our appetites the world right now is only hours away from anywhere anywhere hours away i'm sure that in the in the next future or in, in the next uh, maybe five ten years i'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again they will program them to work with your mind i just think of nas and his phone beeps it can happen i mean there's artificial intelligence in phones phones can feel phones can record they can have memories so the 21st century is here and what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned because the old ways of doing things even as far as kingdom advancement will no longer be effective i think it was school of ministry again i was telling them did you know that right now you can stand near an influential man's daughter attempting to preach to her they can just snap you and in five minutes the police are coming to catch you and they'll say you are harassing her are we together now you are harassing her so the world the world is is gradually strangling the opportunities the access points we have to reach people and we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the spirit of god to adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate is god blessing us one of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the holy spirit let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the holy spirit you will become something else completely something else there are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century please listen to me there are businessmen there are there are entrepreneurs there are all kinds of people families the the paradigm of fatherhood parenting leadership is being compelled to change to adjust to 21st century living but you see a believer is not just one who is born again a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom and that your change must be with the holy spirit supervision so that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change and which ones are flexible enough not everything in the christian life is permitted to change there are timeless things there are components of the believer's life that must remain constant and i'll tell you where we get this teaching from first corinthians 9 22 please i need to balance this teaching is god blessing us already first corinthians 9 22 this is the bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in and we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy now i believe in metamorphosis i'm teaching you change now but that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the holy spirit everyone read this is paul writing to the corinthian church one to read to the weak became as i as weak that i may gain the weak are we together read on i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some now paul is saying something interesting here let me translate this for you paul is saying i can become anything to anybody this is a nice verse for satan to take advantage of meaning become a smoker to smokers are we together become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them that's not what the bible is saying but that's what has happened in many churches in our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century we have been misguided by this scripture and many things that happen there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week 
that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic meaning the holy spirit is involved hallelujah the idea listen the idea of paul here is that i am able to make adjustment the idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions it's an idea of making adjustments the summary of this entire communication is that paul is saying because of the reality of my society i am able to make adjustments listen any church any pastor that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews i repeat any pastor any businessman any ceo any worker that cannot adjust notice i didn't say leave your convictions adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people when you become rigid and stringent forget about advancing the kingdom in today's world one of our fathers who has done that most remarkably that is a model for all of us is papa e. E. Adeboe. i've studied the redeemed christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence i will tell you the key is this flexibility not compromise there is a difference between compromise and flexibility papa Iya deboe is a man of strong convictions he's very conservative in his approach to christianity alongside his wife but he realized that if i must achieve the mandate of seeing every redeemed church or at least in every two or three houses let there be one redeemed member i must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising the key is to maintain your convictions but give allowance for the conviction of others let them be able to find a place in your vision and so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches and so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative still adhering to the foundational tenets and you can see one that is quite modern in fact very modern you may not know that this is redeemed his job as a man of god is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeemed this is a winning strategy so you can find redeemed in france you can find redeemed in um in in certain places that you would not expect many pastors are unwilling to bend we are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility so the key is that we must be able to make adjustments everybody say adjustment adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement you cannot say i cover my hair i don't i don't believe in wearing trousers for instance or leaving hair. and you say any other person i come across who i see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil i tear the person down you are going to be frustrated at the same time nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily you have a right to sustain your convictions but at the same time you must be able to give room are we together now i'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century i've gone to minister in several places and um when you go to minister in places you'll be amazed the approach of many people i've gone to ministries that are very conservative very very conservative i've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox i've gone to ministries that are wild i've gone to ministries that are lawless that one is not charismatism it's lawlessness 
yet in the midst of it i have been able to make adjustment without violating my convictions are we together koinonia runs on certain convictions but part of the reason why god has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments are we together now adjustments that can allow people to to come in and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies but give them space to know god for themselves and in that knowing god many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them is god blessing us yeah you cannot win people you resent you cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil you want to kill me and your idea was to come and win her and then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner you see i will not listen to your message no 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 no. it has nothing to do with being angry i will not listen to your message you come to preach to me for 10 minutes you don't even know what my name is you are initiating me into a cult you are misrepresenting the love of christ at the same time i will not come and see you and you say ah uh, you really want to preach christ to me if prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this I'm, I'm in the club if you really want to win me come and meet me at the club i won't come go to hell are we together there is a balance so that we don't begin to do stupid things there are ladies that have entered relationship you ask them why they say i'm on a code ah, you are not sss that's 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 too costly you say i entered relationship it's not love or oh, i don't love him ask him i i am passionate about souls you are getting it wrong i'm trying to explain this scripture i become all things to all men does not mean i leave my convictions to turn into everything no whether you are wearing jeans or suit you are a christian and being a christian is is exact there's no confusion about it christianity is not buddhism there are exact tenets there are exact foundational convictions write this down we must carefully study the word please let's write let's hurry up we must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance we must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance listen the key to kingdom advancement is found in the bible timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the bible we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now keys to kingdom influence Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Sing it one more time. Ask and now give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. 
distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us keys to kingdom influence listen i've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence the new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism the advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform and is able to influence the convictions of people never trivialize influence and its effect to a person a territory a people and a civilization at every point in your life you are being influenced by somebody and you are influencing somebody keys are very important in the kingdom you hear jesus speak again about keys and i will give you the keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws and the principles that give us access the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws the principles that give us access there are keys to kingdom influence and in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm praying that i say i begin to teach this as you embrace it you will step into a level of influence that will surprise you the lord spoke to us and said this is a year of multiplied grace and influence he expects us to do more and he's guiding us on how to get there number one the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace setting trailblazing global mentality write it the way i said it don't write your idea pace setting comma i took time to write it this way it's supposed to create an effect don't scatter it pace setting comma trailblazing comma global mentality write it and look at me let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind we're on our way to paradise. We're on our way to paradise. Mm. We're on our way to paradise. Hold on. Pace setting, trailblazing, global mentality. See, we, many of us are still growing. And we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is. As marketed to us by our institutions, as marketed to us by our upbringing, as marketed to us by our Christian advocates, our pastors. We are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years. our approach the approach of the average christian is not global the approach of the average christian is not pace setting we are comfortable with mediocrity yet we want to command influence a music artist no global mentality no pace setting mentality so we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for god but our mindsets are small i have challenged the leaders again and again koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an, a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is, is way beyond Nigeria and Africa. You see, we must be able to excel. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew 5, 14. Then Deuteronomy 6, 2-3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. 
Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One, two, read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? Global approach to life. We start up businesses with no idea of global approach. The average business in Nigeria, if it lasts 10 years, is a miracle. 15 years is a wonder. We don't think far. Right? The average church, do you know how many churches start in January and by December they are dead? Because the way the pastor started and was running, you would think rapture will happen tomorrow. And he runs no, no sense of leadership, no pace setter, trailblazer mentality. We come into a system and do the exact same thing. Listen, listen. There is a difference between a manager and a leader. A manager maintains status quo. A leader breaks new frontiers. A true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit. You cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old. Daniel 6, verse 2 to 3. Pace setting mentality. Hallelujah. This was the story of Daniel. Look up, please. Let's see the kind of mindset Daniel had. It's not just that he was called Daniel. He reigned over certain provinces. The Bible says, and over these three presidents, sorry, I'm cutting from verse 1, of whom Daniel was what? Please read it. Of whom Daniel was? First means a pace setter. First means a leader. Surpassing ordinary standards. He said that the princes might give accounts to them and the kings should have no damage verse 3 then this daniel was what everybody say pace setters this daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes why because an excellent spirit was it because he was a christian because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible and the king thought to set him over what? Influence as a result of a pace setting mentality. How many Christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons? They don't care. In fact, they run away. When they tell them they are considering you for promotion, they say, ah, have for what now? How about God? Is it that you don't know what? It's a demonic mentality. Whoever taught you that? Is, it, it may be a sincere person, but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church bad. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up, he broke status quo. Genesis 41. Give us 33, then we move to 38 to 44. Please, very fast. Sorry, we have to read these things because I want to press something in tonight. Genesis 41, give us verse 33, then we'll move to 38 down to 44. Now look up please everyone. This was the story of Joseph. Now therefore, this is Joseph, advising Pharaoh. Now therefore, look out for a man discreet and wise. Whoever qualifies, whoever has that mentality, give him this kind of influence set him over the land of egypt there is influence for the taking but there is a requirement who is that one man in egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result give us verse 38 hear what the king says in response and pharaoh said unto his servant can we find may that be your testimony that even your enemies will sit together and say let's tell ourselves the truth can we find a trailblazer that when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church 
they turn and say which which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government can we find such a one as this is a man of whom the spirit of god is we're reading down to 44 and pharaoh said unto joseph listen for as much as god has showed thee this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art watch how cheap influence becomes thou shalt do what i give you influence instantly thou shalt be over my house i hope you know pharaoh knew that joseph was not an egyptian there are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background all this issue of we don't accept people from this state they've not found an exceptional person that's why that's when you see them breaking the rule they will say this is the first time we're doing it say that's the, i'm a i'm a first timer i have i have the spirit of breaking new grounds thou shalt be over my house and according to my word shall all thy word shall all the people be ruled can you imagine that's a costly that's a risk from pharaoh he says only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over how many all the land of egypt do you think that's good for the kingdom do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence. Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where is my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. Because of mentalities that we think are good. The church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement. We are there smiling, throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is, is gaining, is squeezing the church into a mode. And one policy can just write us away. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of royalty, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land. Shout influence. influence. Say it again. Influence. In our families, there's nobody to speak for us. When we are suffering, we just call on God directly. And God wants to answer, but there is no envoy, no human being that can partner with God to wipe our tears do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family you hear people here say i'm the first person to go to school i'm the first person to get a job you know the danger every other person surrounds you like worms drawing from you you are earning hundred thousand and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you leadership is the passion to excel when i talk of leadership i don't just mean ruling leadership in terms of excelling the passion to excel at an uncommon level i'm explaining to you what pace setting trailblazing global mentality is in one word is leadership the passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere listen 
The reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access. We need men and women who have access. And I tell you, Koinonia, hear me. This is what you are becoming. Are we together now? Oh, this is what you are becoming. Just give us time. In the next few years, in the next few years, you know the way if somebody is walking and he says, my name is Nas Dangote, even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. I will never pastor and lead people who are failures we just comfort ourselves and no 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 a passion to excel you are in agriculture you are thinking how do i lead not kai how do i get my small one mudu of beans me and my wife she's not even complaining you are not pace setting you are not trailblazing remember that if all you want to do is succeed, you are carnal. But if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow God to come into that space, you are an ambassador. Always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit. And then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you. I will never be small. I hate it. And it is for the kingdom. Number two. The second key to kingdom influence is character. You want to command kingdom influence. In our generation today, you need character. Everybody say character. What is character? Christ-likeness. Moral uprightness. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 9 talks to us about sustaining kingdom character just write it down we may not have time to look at it listen brothers and sisters please look at me if you want to be global those outside please pay attention if you want to go far in business in ministry in your career you have to curb a lot of excesses in your life. The Bible says, listen to me. The Bible says, um, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are permissible, but not all things are necessary. On your journey to influence, there are weights. Some things are not necessarily sinful. They are just weights. Weights. Character. Moral uprightness. From the way you speak. The way you dress. The way you behave. You want to be a leader. You are in a place they are sharing food. Ah, I have not got it. You are just stretching. You are not a leader. God cannot promote you to disgrace him like that. There is a decorum. There is a protocol for great people. I'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life. But you must be disciplined. You are dressing, you iron your clothes. You talk well. You see people, you greet them. You don't see somebody like our daddy here and say, Ah, daddy, how are you, prof? You know, as if you are talking to, to yourself. No. Character. There are many people who do not have character. Moral uprightness. You see an elderly woman moving your mother, something you cannot help her pick up the load. No character. There's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away. We, we associate youthfulness to wildness. That means if you are temperate, people think you are too cold. Be wild. You won't be a leader that way. Look at how teachers, the teachers in our school, who teach our students. You see how they dress? You see how they talk? Now, I'm not against anything, but a young man comes, rings in his five hands. I'm not against all of those things, but you are not, it's not seen. 
but it's a weight. The students are watching you. The next day, they come with it too. You sag your jeans. A teacher, you see jeans with, um, um, uh, what they call it, all kinds of, there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere. I mean, there's nothing for the imagination. Believe me, if nobody has told you anything is wrong with it, Joshua Selman is saying it, write it, mark me. Something is wrong with that kind of thing. You won't go far with it. I'll preach, oh. Hallelujah. See, there is a protocol to greatness. You must give up something to go up. You cannot go up with everything you wear with down. It's, it, you are down because a weight held you. If you are ready to move up, be ready to drop some things. Vulgar communication. Don't speak intelligently. Many of us today cannot construct a good letter, a proposal, because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us. You are writing something to apply for a job. You are writing you as you, for as letter four. You see that? I need a job from you. Thanks. And the manager looks at it and says, look at, look at all these nuisance to our company. We have labored to build ourselves and these people are coming to destroy us see our generation interprets modesty as weakness when your life is temperate you feel guilty for it because we live in a generation where you must be loud and wild to be thought of those people will not last long history is full of many of them Prison cells are full of many of them. They created their own rules to life. Everybody say, I'll be a man of character. Say it, I'll be a man of character or a woman of character. Yes. Every bad wife was a bad human being. Every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being. Every bad leader was a bad human being you bring in your personality you bring in your mindset it doesn't just change when you become ceo it's an attitude hallelujah moral uprightness you are calm not the person moving around gossiping about everybody saying everything about everybody no only cheap people do that only idle people do that. Hallelujah. There are rules for greatness. You ignore them, you will never be great. The level that God has brought us in ministry by the grace of God. You see all these people inside and outside. I honor God and I bless them. But never make a mistake. They didn't just come just because of the anointing. There are factors combined together. This is what I'm teaching you. See, let me tell you. People never become loyal to you until they probe your life and they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to. Loyalty is not a gift. You earn it. Are we together? There are so many people who see, especially some of us young people, and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity. No. Loyalty is a product of a track record. People probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions and they, they, are, they, are, they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to. You don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual. Character. There are many pastors who don't have character. You just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning. Peace be unto this house and pastor so 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 bang 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 bang. Madam is dirty. You think it's a nice thing. They are marking you. You represent boredom to them. No character. Are you anointed? Yes. Will you last like that? No. That's how we inconvenience a lot of people. You now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say, transfer 7,000 or 10,000 to my account. God keeps quiet and you think he was right. He was very wrong. It's just his mercy that overlooked it. There are pastors who do that. The moment they say, I want to pray for you, what they say is, I want money from you. 
moment they pray for you they just say transfer 2000 to my account so that it can activate the faith there is a place for seed faith but many of the things we do that's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people even some of us young ministers you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting they are looking at you you have to talk for five minutes for them to eat to loosen up and say oh this guy this guy looks very cultured character you get to somebody's house in five minutes you have entered their kitchen their prime plantain you carry one you eat the world they are watching you there are some of us like this i must talk to you i want you to become something and we must cut these things don't do that say no 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 we are free they always allow me no see let me tell you part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good you must see there are certain things that is like esau you are trading your birthright for it there are times people have carried fat seeds and and checks something to give me and the holy spirit will say no 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 because in their minds they are feeling guilty they are not just blessing me out of conviction they just feel tall this man of god has prayed and you see them i'm ready to go and see them pinching themselves giving signs and somebody will enter and they come out and then i tell them i said no 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 no. i receive it i bless it and i sew it back and they say, ah, man of god can we have your number please honestly you see that you have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you your convictions are greater than money for some of us Abba, you collect and count it and say Abba, madam you too Abba, what is all this how much is my transport from where i left i did night vigil deliverers the money you are dropping ten thousand you drop it on the table there and say madam add something are you fake no but you are a suspect it's easy for people to think you went to collect power some of us the way we dress now please um don't 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 feel bad i'm, I'm just trying to work on you i've seen men of god I'm, please i'm not uh i wish i don't have to preach this boy i have to obey god from your hairstyle the way you look you look like a thief you look like i mean the way you are dressing and even when you are talking people are afraid they are not at ease honestly you may not be you may be the nicest person available but something about your lack of character and environment you tell a lady i want to see you she's shaking because she doesn't even know what can happen I want you to be on a project that you must be trusted be on a project be trustworthy not perfection but you are sincere enough to be trustworthy when people commit their loyalty to you it's a trust you don't disappoint it how many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people loyalty is a trust brothers and sisters so God is talking to some of us now who are careless with little, little things. You just sit down and send a text to four or five sisters. You make jollof rice for me. You, my birthday is coming by June. I want a suit. Sam, you buy uh, this and that. There are men of God that do that. I'm sorry if, if you are in that category, forgive me, but it's wrong. I cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department, all of you bring 100,000. My birthday is coming in June. Choir, you bring, bring, buy me shoe. Uh, all the pastors, <laughs> Pastor Femi and Alf and you who have congregation, so you people, you, ah, ah. God didn't send you to be a burden to the people. Sometimes we do these things sincerely, but I'm telling you now, there is need for adjustment. Don't do that. See, bless the people and let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are they will surprise you they will surprise you there is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you amen let's go to the next point some of you don't seem to like this point the third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence excellence 
what is excellence the quality of doing things well the quality of doing things well write this down the difference most times is not what you do but how you do it the difference brothers and sisters that makes you a great man of influence most times is not what you do is how you do it while i was babbing this this evening i was talking to my baba and i was just telling him that do you know that there are babbing saloons in abuja that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him but you will pay because of how they do it the clipper for barbing is different for carving is different there is really nothing there it's just packaging but because of that packaging you will pay for it he was telling me that they, i think it was oga jordan he should be here he went to abuja also and then he went to bab somewhere with his brother and they paid three thousand they gave them wine and chinchin is that what you cannot buy how much is chinchin ten naira how much is this coke this 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 uh, heaven pure heaven wine 250 add it together you paid three thousand and then you watch match but listen it's excellent so you'll be rewarded when you are excellent you name your price you see that what you are doing now are you excellent in it please let me talk to us i salute i know many people in koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things but i want to challenge you are you excellent oh you make kunu you think he's small but are you excellent why don't you think of a way of doing it very well don't say kunu is not nice if you make it well i will buy it I think someone in the protocol he has um, some popcorn machines on campus and then i told him i said i want to taste your popcorn let me see what and what do you put there and he was telling me what he said all that one is stories bring it let me taste let me know whether you are excellent see let me tell you something the minimum standard in our world today is excellence even if you don't have the finance to grow into it have the mindset first so you have only one cloth and that one cloth will make it look as if you are not excellent you are because already you ha you've had an ideology of excellence you iron it you look smart it's not doing ministry that makes you excel it's how you do it it's not preaching that makes you excel it's how you preach it's not doing business that makes customers come to you it's how you do it it's not doing your job that makes you excel, but how you do it. Exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people. They are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized. Excellence. Say, I'll be excellent. Say it again, I'll be excellent. Number four. Give me a few minutes here and we'll pray. Open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear. The fourth key in our day in the 21st century to strategic kingdom advancement is called results. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. Uncommon results is one of the greatest key, greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence. John 15 verse 8. Listen, I will share with you certain things about results today. That will make you go back to your life and you will insist that i must produce results john 15 verse 8 15 not 5 15 verse 8 okay 
herein is my father glorified read on that ye bear fruit much fruit exceptional fruit notable result he says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today thrives on results pace setters influencers are those who command results remember my teaching commanding results i want you to pay attention right now write this down on common supernatural result is the end of all argument on common supernatural result is the end of all argument creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god waiting for their manifestation i tell you i feel the anointing of the spirit as i'm talking about this something will happen something must happen to you tonight uncommon result is the end of all arguments write this down results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances oh hallelujah i'm a believer in the word of god results listen look at me when you produce results in your life it shows certain things that you have authority you have got the keys that commands authority i told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances there are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night that's 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 a situation that's a circumstance you hear them say circumstances beyond our control and whoever can bring it under control must command influence Mark Zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control on common supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of god and with all humility to an extent god has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life i was in kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um with my people we were just trying to eat have a meal before we rush and come back to zaria and while we we're there just trying to order a meal a woman looks at me and um ah the woman was looking at me and now i, I started feeling embarrassed i said madam do i know she said you are pastor joshua i said yes she said ah well done sir and i looked i said ah, madam how are we you know i was playing with her little boy and i said where do i know you and the woman just nodded she said she was going to tell me a little story and she said i came for counseling two years ago looking as wretched as anything a single mom with a child no hope for marriage finances crashing everything being destroyed and you prayed for me and you prophesied you told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they will send me to the marketing department and i should go there say man of god that's exactly what happened they sent me to the marketing department and i was i was sad and she did her hand like this i saw a ring she said two months ago i got married even with the child she pointed outside and i saw a clean black e-class she said will you believe that i will be the owner of this brothers and sisters say results one result will end every kind of argument every kind 
Is God speaking to us? Results. Pastors produce results. Produce results. You know why our prayer department, by the grace of God, is like it's like second koinonia, it's like midweek service of koinonia for many people because of results. They are praying and they are seeing results. Nobody will come and spend two, three hours here just like that. People are not idiots. Results. By the time your life, listen, I don't care how much you pray or fast. If there is no result, you will be frustrated. The end of your work with God is that God, ah, you come to a point where you become so full of the anointing of the Spirit, you can produce some common results. Fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Sing one time. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run I want to run over. You must have a passion. I like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results. You are a pastor, no results, no healings, no miracles, no salvation, no transformation. And you explain away and say, it's because I'm telling the truth. People are not coming. All those things are flimsy excuses. Results. When a family that is barren comes and there is a miracle, that's results. There are some results you cannot argue with. No. No. You're a businessman. Don't worry that people don't believe in you. My brother, produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody. Even if all you are doing is parking soccer away, just produce results. Let me tell you something. It's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show. Because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness. Not your words. I can do this. I am this and that. No! I can pray. Where is the fruit of the prayer? I can fast. Where is the fruit of the fasting? I am warded. Where is it? Results. You want to command influence in our world today. You need results. You need results. This is the apex of this teaching tonight. You need results. Supernatural results. Write the following things about results. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Let me show you a scripture that would probably really, really surprise you. Kabbalah Kora Subariyatara. Give us Matthew 14, please. Let's look at it. Matthew 14. Shabaratu zede balakariyada. Ombri da subre hashina malia karatu skopreya. Matthew 14. We read from verse 23, and um. We'll read down to the end. Let's hurry up. And when he had sent the multitudes away, everybody watch this. He went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Rush, media, just continue. But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. There was a situation those in the sheep could not control. Next verse. And in the fourth watch of the night, 
Jesus went on to them doing what? Brothers and sisters, the same water, the same water was responding differently to Jesus. The same water. You know why? Because Jesus was operating on certain principles. Are we together now? Next verse. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying it is a spirit. Notable results. And they cried out for fear. There is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you, they will be afraid. That one will move beyond the realm. I watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of God begins to break out. I see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust, trying to show like I'm, I'm okay, I'm not afraid. There are certain results that can happen in your life. It will make the heart of men fear. But straightway Jesus spake to them saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. He said, Be not afraid, verse 28. And Peter said unto him, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. 29. Hmm. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the water, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 30. This is my verse of emphasis. But when he saw the wind boys terrors, he was afraid and began to sing. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Look at this. Two people are standing on water. One is sinking. The other one is standing. Was it the water? Never the water. Same Nigeria. Same economy. Same dollar rise. Same everything. Are we together now? Same harshness in ministry. Same being in the north where they say people are persecuted. But then you sustain a mystery. Jesus was standing. And when Peter cried, he lifted Peter and Peter stood just like him. Meaning you can bring people to your experience. Listen. There was something Jesus knew that made that water treat him that way. There is something you do not know that is making your life turn around. Someone is walking through it like this. Life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept. Please hear me. Correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Number two, results are a product of mastery. 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 Exceptional competence. You have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously. That's the kind of attitude that produces results. Number three, results are a product of diligence. There are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens. Sometimes you may knock for many years, but you continue. Diligence and persistence. Is what separates men from boys diligence number four and I want you to leave this take home this one tonight results are a product of the presence of the anointing ah the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference when results become supernatural and consistent, then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it. When results become notable and consistent, listen, listen, if you produce results for a short time, it will not create the effect. It needs to be consistent. That's why you find out that God can be using a particular man of God or a church. He can continue for many years and then one day, it's like he hits a breaking point in the spirit. In one year, he will step into a dimension of increase. Consistency. Consistency. I was watching a video of Steve Joe, late Steve Joe, Apple founder, 1991. 1991. He was talking to their team of executives. And if you hear that guy's idea, as at 91, everything he was saying they would do, they did. Men who produce results. Brothers and sisters, if you're part of this ministry, you must produce results. Not just receive results, produce results. 
in every area hallelujah when our sister came up and said she got five points i laughed but i was impressed with her but i'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row that's no table enough that's the type we can clap with and smile set your standard so high even when they are clapping for you you are still pressing to move higher if you set your standard too low you will hit it easily that's what mediocrity is setting low standards i like her she said four point something when she hit it she set another one you must set a very high standard there is such a high standard that i put in ministry that's why i don't compete because the standard alone i keep competing against that standard is enough to engage me hallelujah i want to get to a point where i will be so full of the holy ghost so full of the anointing of his spirit i'm telling you you don't have to start praying for people it doesn't matter what you are talking about they will pay to get your presence in a place even if it's just to sit down they know they will never be the same fill me up till i overflow i want to run over i want to run over please fill me up till i overflow i want to run over. listen let me challenge you everybody here create a system that measures your growth don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself a and organize speech and price for yourself you are a mediocre when you do that challenge your standard don't do small things and rejoice over it let me tell you something the key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that as a pastor i'm better than this guy as a great i'm better than this guy those kind of people will never be my friends those who come around and start telling you who they are better than no because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises I, i'm not a product of all those kinds of things there is enough the assignment the demand of the assignment is enough you compete against the standard god has given you there is a benchmark those who are men of god today were ushers in the bible welfare personnel look at the condition to be in welfare full of the holy ghost welfare to serve food you needed to serve food with the anointing so we are constantly moving thank god for what god is doing through the school of ministry but we are rising thank god for what god is doing through our messages and the media ministry but we are rising the result is too small the result is not yet notable enough i tell you compared to where we are going this is child's play we've not started anything the level of excellence is still at its foundation foundation we have not even done anything that's how you challenge yourself don't sit down with your small business and come back with five thousand and you are laughing and say kai it's better than nothing be happy for where you are but never want to remain there oh what do you do i'm into interior decor are you a, see let me tell you something anything you are not competent in just keep quiet about it talking about it will be disgracing yourself there are so many people around ask them what do you do they say i'm into interior decor really like who like what how much can i pay you is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if i don't like you you have a restaurant can we eat in your restaurant if we have a guest coming can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable i have a church can i come to your church and sit down and be sure that god will bless me oh i'm a driver like who where do you know challenge yourself don't mark yourself and say i'm good there are many talented people inside and outside somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me i said my brother please go and work on it god is helping you don't produce anything from this go and work on it 
it's obvious you i can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this i told them who is your role model who is your inspiration they say he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk i said how many of their videos do you have not their videos of the album they produce have you watched their stage rehearsals have you gone out of your way to find out how they rehearse listen you don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance you watch from a man by learning how he builds you don't learn from Usain Bolt by seeing how he runs no you see how he rehearses you don't learn from a man of God by just seeing how he displays the anointing. You learn the mystery of his secret place. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. God is taking us far. There are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence. Opportunities came and passed us by. He's still passing us by because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence. There are so many people in this place you are in business you are the only one who knows you're in business because your products you don't know nothing about business you will not sit down and learn you will not grow everybody will be what are you doing i'm into real estate what are you doing i'm a ceo ceo of nothing there's no result sit down and learn many young people moving around with suit and bible and, and ipad what are you i'm a pastor my name is pastor pastor david revelation or david king or something that's not what will give you open the doors of ministry let me tell you something god knows as a person i am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious and ready to rise up believe me anything you are doing if it's not of standard and you don't get standard by default you learn learn from the best don't learn from your colleagues your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way you rise up you learn something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited something you know but have refused to believe is making you stay. God has given me access on common access to people and sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream I'm saying Joshua Selman what are you looking for in this place influence influence whenever you see a man of influence don't be angry it's not mistake results brothers and sisters I'm the first born in my family, but the way they are even treating me, I can't even talk. Result, result, result. Everybody say result. Produce result and you will switch the button. I'm 20 years, I'm 30 years, they are still treating me like a child. Result. Prove them wrong. Produce results. Don't make noise. I'm obsessed about studying successful people. I'm not ashamed. I, I have an appetite to confront my ignorance. I confront it with joy and gladness. I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that knowledge. I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry it's as a result of the results the level of organization at the little level we are in there is a formula to it it's not just happening by mistake that you come and as many as we are there is still some level of organization you don't guess you learn what you see today is what we knew yesterday tomorrow will reveal what we have known today Please, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. If you want to command influence, influence has monetary value. People will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes. And you will say, Lord, what, what is this? What are you doing to me? For if the cloud be full of rain, the Bible says they empty themselves upon the earth. Men of God, 
God is challenging us tonight. Stop being a mediocre. Surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them, I'm the one who prays most. That's nonsense. Mediocrity. I'm the one who has revelation more. Mediocrity. Somebody writes jam and gets 120 and his friend gets 80 and he turns and says, Kai, but I gap you by how many points? Let's count. No, I'm not, I'm not mocking. It's, it's not a mockery. I'm using it as an example. Don't feel bad if you didn't make it for jam. In fact, I, I hear they are going to write it. We'll pray for them at the end of the service. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. I know that this teaching is touching some of you. There are people who are seated right now. You can pretend like what I'm saying is not serious. There are many people standing outside right to the back. Some of them are just standing and thinking about their lives. I want to excel in my life. And I want my excellence to be intentional. Set a high standard, Koinonia. Set a high standard. Challenge yourself. When God gives you that influence, men will thank you for being influential. Your children will thank you. I was sharing with the School of Ministry students, some of the things I do today is no longer for myself. If it's for myself, I will stop doing some things because I've already created a system that will bless myself. I've started thinking transgenerational, both spiritual and physical, not just physical children. That anybody connected to me will be implicated for success just by being associated. And Lot went with Abraham. The secret place of Abraham implicated Lot until he was blessed. Who gets blessed following you? Or are you the type parents who warn their children about and say, don't follow this, this bad boy. He's going to spoil your life. Please, Koinonia, hear the voice of the Spirit tonight. It's time to settle down. Myself, settle down. And produce results. Stop guessing over your destiny. Prosperity is a reaction. It's not dash. Advancement in ministry is a reaction. We have never, never said we'll raise a second offering in this ministry. Say, oh, we cannot pay for bus or we cannot do this. No, it has never happened and it will never happen in the name of Jesus. But it's, it's a formula. It's a formula. We don't have to manipulate you and squeeze your hand. It's a formula. Find out what the formula is. Don't just enjoy and say, Kai, this is a rich ministry. Find out what is the formula. What is the secret of the anointing of the Spirit upon our lives and the ministry? Find out. Do you care to find out? Are you humble enough to find out? I always look at the people that are close to me and I always watch out for their interest in finding out process or results. When I look at people who are close to me, I like to know what their passions are. If you are close to a man of God, there are pastors here, be careful because proximity can destroy your ability to learn. You are always seeing the result. Some of you come for Koinonia and you can sit down here and in the next five minutes, people are flying all over and just say, Kai Apostle is anointed. Do you know it is for the taking? Peter said, help me. And Jesus said, I can show you. Let me teach you what I'm doing that is making me standing. He lifted him. There is something you can learn. There is the secret of the war. There is a mystery you can learn. You can stand upon it. It's not abracadabra. It's not the more you see, the less you understand. The prophetic has a formula. The apostolic ministry has a formula. Don't guess in pride. Learn. Those who learn are the ones who rise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two of you come out. Let this girl go now. Foul devil of darkness. Come out of her. Out.
You're free in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up. Let this girl go now. Thou foul devil. In the name that is above all names. Out you go. Out now. Come out of her. Out of her. Make sure everyone is connecting. This has nothing to do with falling down. God is visiting people. Look at me. You, look at me. Just look at me. No, you don't need to come out. Just look at me. Look at me. Just keep your eyes looking at me. Let this girl go now. The foul devil of darkness. I come against you and against the infirmity. Come out of her. your night of visitation. Hold my hands. Come out of her! God is going to visit this whole family. Hallelujah. Because I'm seeing the thing of darkness. This is what God is showing me. I didn't even know I was pointing to family members. Hallelujah. Mommy, let me pray for you. Because this is, this is a demonic thing. Trying to affect your health. Please hold my hands. Mommy, please look. Please, if you can shout Jesus as loud as you can. Can you? Just as loud as you can. Go ahead. name that is above all names. Please lay one hand on your chest. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. This is a curse of marital delay. Let her go. Now! Thank you, Jesus. Come out of her! Out of her! out you're free same thing come out of her right now devil of darkness you're leaving I see you in the spirit you're going it's time for this family to step into a new level be free Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Any lump, lump in your breast, lump anywhere is going to live right now. Make sure you check yourself. Instant miracles of lumps. I, I saw it and the Lord told me it's time. I want to pray it right now. I told somebody to come out. I brought somebody from that room. Who is the person? I told that God will visit her. Not the woman. Do you know why I called you out? The Lord will wipe these tears that you're crying tonight. Are you listening to me? Just look at me. Roll away. Shame and reproach. 
roll away shame and reproach. Give her a new beginning, O oh God. Visit her family. I want to rebuke lumps right now. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is, this is God is helping people. There are people you've had lumps, multiple lumps in your breast. It's going to disappear right now. Hallelujah. Maybe we'll have a few. Let me tell you something with this lady. You notice she's always coming out. I'll see her afterwards. A literal human being appears to sleep with this girl. This is what is responsible. This is, this is, this is not just an issue of deliverance. This is an issue of help. This is a family thing. This is what the Lord is showing me. This is not just the devil coming. I mean, this is not in a dream. Uh -uh. You see, that's why whenever they come, these spirits leave her, but they don't go away. Early in the morning, they will reappear again. That's it. So, just, just let her be. God will set her free. Hallelujah. Are you ready, Lums? In the name of Jesus. Please, as soon as I pray for you, make sure you start checking yourself. Many of you will be shocked. It will look like magic. Maybe we'll take some testimonies here. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, every lump in your breast or any part of your body, your neck, your waist, wherever, right now, I command it to disappear. In the name of Jesus, I command it to leave. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Go ahead, begin to check yourselves. Come, bring that child. Can we have the mic, please? What's, 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 this, what's the issue? Help us with the mic, please. He has not been eating. Who brought him? Whose child is this? Where is his mother? If we are calling your child, Mama, please come. Let's save time. Huh? They came all the way from Kano. Yes, I asked them to come. You rejoice because you will know you meet God tonight. Amen. Please, somebody hold this child because you too. Come out of her. Out. Hold this child, please. You are the first to be visited. All the way from Kano. That devil. This woman is supposed to die before the end of the year. I curse this spirit. Out right now. Out of her with a loud shout you are going. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong with the child? He has not been eating. So we take him to the office. Why did he have all this abnormality? The so, doctors. Madam, look at me. You are delivered. I don't know what it is that runs through your leg. But I'm seeing light. Power of God. Hallelujah. What happened to your child? Talk to us, please. Let's save time. I gave back to him normal. It was normal when I gave back to him. Okay. So when he was four months, we discovered that the front I was enlarging. So we went to hospital after the scanning. They said that there is water in the head. That water came. Water? Yes. That's hydrocephalus. So we need doctors. Who is a doctor here? They said he was going to undergo operation. Not student doctor. Eh? Okay, come. Thank you, sir. What? They say hydrocephalus. What's that? Hydrocephalus is accumulation of water in, in the furnaces of the brain. Okay, what does it what does it lead to this? Yes. It will keep on enlarging until the capacity of the bone is able to contain it. So the bone itself will keep on enlarging and the sinuses, that is the sutures, will keep on expanding. Does it have a medical cure? Um, the only medical cure is to drain the water. But even as at that, I don't think it has a medical care. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. That he might destroy the works of you. See, the Bible says, 
from the beginning it was not so this is nonsense are you listening to me and our job is to bring everything back to the obedience of Christ hallelujah father in the name of Jesus we pray this demonic you did not create look at me come back leave her leave her leave her leave her don't talk to her she will come back you will come back with a testimony this child's head will start reducing are you hearing me this child it supernaturally you will see it go back are you listening to me hold on i know i'm seeing a girl baby girl that was my first daughter i lost her where is she she's dead she's dead that's what i said the spirit of death you would have died before the end of the year because i'm seeing a baby girl mm -hmm. and then i didn't see her again where's your husband he's in Canada. get ready a baby girl is coming again Huh? Are you listening to me? Yes, I have three boys. I just gave birth. It was still a boy. I was not happy. That's what I'm telling you. Did, did you discuss this with me? Did you discuss this? No, with me? No. Please, if I don't call any case, don't start bringing people out, please. Please, time, but let her come out. You. If we, if if we don't call cases, please, we are taking this. I'm meeting you for the first time. That's what I'm saying. Knowing me is not important. It's the Lord Jesus Christ whom you know. He will come back here and give a testimony Amen. of a baby Amen. girl. Amen. All right? The flame of death. And tell your husband, where is he working? He worked with a school. He and then what happened? He's still working. He's still working there. Yes. That's not where he's supposed to be. Huh? We take him to the rightful place. Amen. Where God will bless him. Because this, this has been a financial challenge. This is issue of money. Yes. Is that true? Yes. But you people too are not very faithful in tithing. So you must have been faithful in tithing. Huh? Did you discuss it with me? No. You will tithe one today because of an emotional message. The only way God knows. You open the door for Satan. Hmm? Madam, you will go back with favor. Amen. I release upon you that grace for favor. You came with them. What's wrong with his ears? Uh, they took him to the hospital. He was. He he's still was, as a result. It's as a result of all of these things. It's connected. Don't worry. As God is taking him back, there will be complete restoration. Yeah. Hmm? Your son will not. You will come back here with testimonies. Yeah. Who are you? You know them, or you're from Kano too? My elder sister. Your elder sister. Yes, Tell sir. me one thing you want the Lord to do for you. To heal. Think well, not him, you. Don't just talk carelessly. I'm not. Not many people will have the opportunity to be asked this question. Let me tell you. To help my family with open doors of favor. Where is your father? My father is late. Where is your mother? Behind them. No, no, no. I'm not saying she should come out. Okay. She's sitting behind them. You are a student? Yes. Yeah. I finished my secondary school tonight, so I've been writing jumps since. This is what you would have asked. This is why I asked you. That's what I was praying for you. Eh? You have your relatives here, people who know you who are also praying for you. Hold my hands. Get into the university in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever the problem is, we cancel it here right now. I don't care what it is. We admit you into any university of your choice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your number one desire. God will locate your family. Bless you. Where is, please, who brought this woman? Please, if we don't call your case, we are going to, we are going to deal with this. If not, we will have this place very rowdy now. Who brought this woman? Oh, yeah, come now. Who brought her? No, no, don't worry, don't worry. What's wrong with her? Brain problem. Brain. She lost her memory. She lost her memory. She's lost her memory. She doesn't know you now. Ah. What happened? Don't know. I'm just her house help. Oh, you are just her house help. Come and hug me. Look at this girl. Many house helps. This is the time to plunder and run away, Pastor. 
may God turn you from a house help to a great woman. This is your own blessing this night. Hallelujah. This is terrible. Thank you, Jesus. That devil of darkness, he will let this woman go. I bring you life. Life to these dead cells, dead brains. In the name of Jesus. Stand up. Stand up. You look at me. Just look at me. Just look at me. Just try to look at me. Come back to your miracle. Find someone and keep this noise again. Sweetheart, I pray for you. May the Lord visit you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody brought somebody brought a very sick person. for them but the Lord is showing me you brought somebody is he a sick person who is that person inside or outside please let's save time more God really wants to visit people and we don't want to waste unnecessary time here he will come back with testimonies for this woman it's terrible hallelujah the Lord is showing me someone literally feel as though they put pepper in your eyes when you look at light like this it burns you seriously this thing started this year who is that person please who is that person who is that person no oh. is she the okay come Who brought her? Mama? Does she, can I speak English or does she want answer? Come now. Why are you afraid? Huh? What's, what's the issue? Diabetes. Diabetes. It's affecting, also her, eyes. It's affecting her eyes. I'll pray for her. Tell her I'll pray for her and the Lord will heal her. Is she hearing? Is she here? Mama, I'll pray for you right now. is a spirit be healed of diabetes right now I come against that foul spirit Check herself. Find out that there's no diabetes again. You, you came for yourself. What's wrong with you? Um, it's not that I'm sick. Okay. I need married and. I'm... You want to get married? Go straight to the point. Look, let me tell you something. If we ask you to come out here and we and you are just talking stories, you go back to your seat. Praise God. This is this is a family. Nobody is against marriage here. Is that true? If you came here for marriage, when we are praying, receive it. Don't say my neighbor will look. You don't want to get married. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Look at me. Did you hear the testimonies of the marriage? Uh, the marriage yes, testimonies. Yes, Do you believe God is still at work in this place? Yes, sir. Hold my hands. Are you in a relationship? You need to be delivered first before marriage. Hmm? I release you from this curse. This is what has been holding her back. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. We will come back with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for supernatural marriages. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Some of you will need to outside. Are you, can you hear me outside? You can stand for yourself or for your family members. I want to pray. Make sure the person you want to get married to is of the opposite sex. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Please believe the Lord. Because one of the things that has been happening in this place is supernatural, inexplainable, the hand of God. Lift your hands. Hmm. In the name that is above all names. Now, there are some of you, as I pray, you see, some of you, what is stopping you is the hand of darkness. For a few people, not everybody, because I'm seeing spirits. The moment I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, the hand of God will come upon some people. Hallelujah. It will come upon them in a mighty way. That's what is stopping the marriage. Lift your hands. Not everybody you can receive, but there are some people, this is what they need. Hallelujah. When I say in the name of Jesus, I just want you to shout, I receive. The moment you say that God will visit some people, I see God touching two ladies outside on this. This, this marriage thing, we must deal with it this night. How many of you believe it? In the mighty name of Jesus. Now that devil of darkness that is responsible for delay in marriages. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. That devil of darkness that is responsible. The power of God is falling. That devil. There are spirits that are responsible for delay. Come out. 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 These are demon spirits. Out in the name of Jesus. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Marital delay. The Lord rebuke you. I tell you, God is setting people free. Marital delay as is happening. Marital delay. Marital delay is a yoke of bondage outside. The fire of God is visiting a few people. All those above 30, 30 and above who have not gotten married, ladies, let God visit you now. I release that fire. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, the fire of the Holy Ghost the fire of the Holy Ghost let there be testimonies of supernatural marriages this row I see an angel standing there is one lady the power of God will come upon you strong that devil of darkness enough is enough just this row because i see the angel of the lord standing lord let that person come out the holy ghost will bring you out you will come out you will come out 
you will come out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Leave her alone. She will come out. No. Hallelujah. I want to curse barrenness. Are you listening to me? Now is the time to stand for your loved ones, for yourself. Some of you lived all kinds of reckless past lives. As you are standing now, you may not even have a womb. A new one will come upon you. When God forgives sins, he forgives consequences. I don't care what the biological complication is. I like you to receive. You will come back with testimonies. Hallelujah. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That curse of childlessness. In the name of Jesus. I set you free. I set you free. I set your loved ones free. I set you free. Any barren person in this place. Any barren family in this place. Matatatata. Reketetete. Reketetete. Reketoshoto. Batoko poteke. Reketeboso kotoba. Reketoriata. Mampleketetete. Ekeboro kopakata. You will come back with miracle children. You will come back with miracle children. Your loved ones will come back with miracle children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for a few people. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is showing me some people You've been so you are an adult, but you don't know what happens. You've been suffering from bedwetting. You wake up in the morning and you find out that you are easing yourself on your bed. There's, no, there's nothing to be embarrassed. Man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are that kind of person. Come and stand out here quickly. Forget about who is watching you. Nobody has that time. Let me tell you. There are people like that, a devil of darkness inside and outside this is a this is a demonic issue there are people low there are people don't be afraid don't be ashamed it's a spirit it's not just about discipline. You can't stop it with discipline. I don't know why God is visiting that situation. Hallelujah. Let's take the next case. I'm seeing problems with your heart. Whether hole in your heart or any form of asthmatic condition. Please come out quickly. Hole in your heart or asthmatic condition. Please let's save time. That devil is a liar. I had an accident. After the accident, they said my heart will enlarge and there is uh, infection. It will, it will go back. Amen. Be free right now. Amen. Heart, return to your normal condition. Infection, go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
as I lay hands on you, whatever the issue is, you will be healed of it. Whether heart, asthma, be free right now. Please make sure you are coming out for the case we are mentioning. What are you coming out for? Feeling a hole in my heart. Always, ever since I suffered from ulcer. After Did the, the doctors treatment. tell you? Yes. After the treatment, the ulcer that's been disturbing me, but it's just for a while. But that hole. Sister, come. God will visit you. This has nothing to do with ulcer. Hmm? Where's your. You have an elder sister? Yes. Where is she? Is she married? Yes. What What's yes. she doing? She's married, but the first child she gave birth to it has been a problematic child. But this is six years now. She has not stepped her feet on the on the ground, and she has not started talking. And Can all this why she has not given birth at all. Lay one hand on your chest. See, whatever is happening to one person here is happening to you too. Are you listening to me? You must believe it. This lady with yellow. That lady, you, you. Look. No, no, don't come out. Just lift your hands where you are. Both of your hands now. Are you pledging? Look at me. Father, visit this girl. The Lord is showing me something about her. Lord, visit this lady. Set her free. It's like a mighty rushing wind. That spirit will not stand. It's looking like a knife is going through you. Set her free, Lord. What's wrong with you? Lay your hands there. Since when? Just lay your hands and look at me. Don't worry. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Heart. Okay, just hold my hands as I pray for you. You'll be free. Free in the name of Jesus. Oh, we love God very well. What of you is not true. How true is it? Eh? See how true it is. Lord, visit him. I break this addiction from your life. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Why did you say it's true? Because I believe in you. Ah, you do. Let it not corrupt your Christian testimony. God is not just visiting you, but your family. You are in for it with God this night because this is multiple. Some families have put some people in trouble they don't know. Parents in their innocence have gone to do things in a bid to try to help the be healed, be free in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be made whole, be free. This is what is happening. This thing is all the way from Lagos. This is God setting this lady free. Sometimes we do things, parents, be careful. You go to places and do things believing you are helping your children. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus.
I release you in the name of Jesus Christ because God wants to use you in your mighty healing ministry. Be healed in the name of Jesus. My brother, God is calling you this night. When I make the altar call, before I finish, just run and come and stand here. Right? This is your night. Eh? There is no issue of running to God and then God brought you because we love you. Okay? You deserve You deserve You deserve The lifting of my Just walk with me. You deserve. Don't be looking at me. Don't worry. this means this is confusion and this is why god is telling me this is how your life is that's why i held you and i was walking god wants to set you free from serious confusion you are easily deceived anybody can tell you anything and that's why i was moving around this does not this is confusion you get easily deceived anybody just say anything and you believe can i pray for you Hold my hands, both of your hands. <sighs> Satan, it's time up for you with this lady. Foul spirit. You will let this lady go, release her. You can't stand it. I've seen you in the spirit. God is against you. This demonic thing must leave you. So paka pata, rekete bola kuso preti kadebosh. That you will have a strong heart. The Bible says, "Be wise as serpents." What are you here for, my sister? Oh, while you were praying, you saw yourself on the ground. You decided to come and report yourself. <laughs> what do you think God is doing? Just stretch your hands like you're receiving something. Look at me. Truly, you will receive something. Just look at me. Come heaven because you are receiving spiritual things. <laughs> you can't hold it, it's too heavy for you. For you and for all your family members, may God visit you. God is not done with you. There is a fire that will burn you. The same thing will be happening to your family members. You need to be free. You love God, but there are all kinds of encumbrances. This night, this one is not just deliverance. This one is God catching you finally for him. Lord, take over her whole life from head to toe. Take over everything you can take over in this lady's life. Cares, go! Cares, go! Yes, go! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray. (laughs) 
<laughs> just leave her out because she's not recovering soon. This one is not just deliverance. God is taking, I have found my servant David. This is what is happening. When God finds a man, he doesn't leave you easily. He makes sure that you rise up with a hunger that nothing else. I trust God that this will happen to many people in this place tonight. Because I tell you, pastor, a lot of people are in certain situations because they love God, but they have cares. So they, are, they, are, they easily become praise. It's not enough to, to be healed or to be delivered. Your heart must be with God for you to walk in sustainable victory. Many people like miracle service. They just run and come and take the miracle and then they run away. But let me tell you something. Your heart. Come, sister. Unto him come who sits on the throne. Let God find you today. Are you hearing me? To Jesus the Lamb who was made Hold my hands. Father, find a vessel in this lady. Do with her what only you can do. Ignite a fire in her spirit. Even as you have revealed to me, let this lady have a, a passion that cannot be quantified. In the name of Jesus, every spiritual weakness leaves you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb who was slain Hallelujah The Lord is healing my grain headache The Lord is healing my grain headache My grain headache Intense My grain headache Where's my neighbor? Is she here? She, she didn't come. Please come. Tonight the Lord is going to visit you. See, many of you don't know that there's something called the season of God's visitation. Precious, yeah. Precious. You are precious. Your real name, all the one precious. <laughs> Make sure it's the name your father gave you. Not the one you gave yourself this night. Say, I must be precious. God, you must visit me. Many people threaten me with text messages during the miracles. I say, see, God must visit me. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is visiting you. Hold my hands. This demon of marital delay is going. You will go to a real deliverance, right? Come out! Come out of her! Shataka balata The fire of God is burning your whole body from head to toe. It's a foul spirit. In this area, we are going to celebrate your wedding. It, I'm announcing it this night. In this area, we are going to celebrate your wedding. That foul devil. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Secretate. Come out of her. Come out. Come out of her. Come out, you foul spirit. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted. This is a snake. Look at look at what is happening. Look at what is happening. I see. Look at look at this. This is what is responsible. Shake Come out. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Zombe ketekelaya. Brata pata kata baladaba. Just leave her. It cannot stand. It's going. Now foul devil. You will release her. There is no hiding. 
the power of God is against you, you will go and return no more. And as you are going, I call forth your husband, not a man, your husband, your husband. Precious, all of you, all of you have. No, 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 I didn't ask my green to come out. But since you came out, may God visit you. You have an elder brother. Where is he? He's in Abuja. Doing what? He's no, he's doing nothing. He went for holidays. Which holiday? He went to Hosu. Tell him to come back. This is what happens to people. They they just believe that bread is in Abuja. Let me tell you. If some of you want to run, you want to fake this and run to Germany. Can I tell you something? The Bible says promotion comes neither from the east nor the west. Because some of you are already planning. You just believe. You say you are running. Where to say greener pastures? The Bible says he makes me lie down in the green pastures is the presence of God. Don't feel embarrassed. Okay? May the Lord visit you and visit your brother in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be a great teacher of the word. Huh? You will be a great teacher of the word. Something like light will hit your eyes right now. And God will give you the spirit of revelation. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Open his eyes. Open his eyes. You will be rich, oh. Because you have suffered, you will be rich. And look at me, I'm not just, this is not entertainment. I'm telling you the word of the Lord. Huh? Never forget the house of God, but you will be mightily blessed. How it will happen, we even make people think you went to diabolic, you went and did diabolic things. May the Lord bring this to pass. You will see it happen. Some of you don't know that God will use you more than you have planned. You just think you will just be passive in the house of God and not do anything. No way. God knows how to get you. He will bring you for miracle service quietly. While you are thinking fashion and business and this... God is thinking fashion plus ministry. It's not just fashion, oh my dear, and beauty makeup is 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 a serious call. Your name is Precious. Where's your mother? Where? Do you believe God wants to visit your family? Yes. Tell your mother to forgive everybody that has done whatever. Yes. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Who offended her? It was one of our uncles. She said, Abba. To her, she said that he, she used to tell us as our children that, that he maltreated her. This thing, since when she was small when till was now, small. this is what is stopping her breakthrough. Did you discuss this with me? No. Let her forgive, please. For as long as you keep somebody down, part of you will still be down. Is that true? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. All those who are called into the worship ministry, please, listen. If you come out here, I, I don't mean you like singing or you have a passion. No, I, I like singing. I'm not called into the worship ministry. You get my point? Please, don't be emotional about it about it come and line up here quickly quickly god wants to visit people i don't know why worship ministry will be alive to see you if after this prayer worship ministry ah. please think about it oh see the worship ministry is not a hobby Blessed is he. If there's no space, just stand where you are because fire, there's going to be a restoration of the Davidic order of worship. 
believe it. I'm going to stand. Listen, as I walk around this place, the power and is, is fire that will come. It will catch many of you in a mighty way. Lord Jesus, as I begin to take it, take it right now. Take it. Fall. Fall. Take it. Take it. Take the fire. 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 The Davidic order of worship. Take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. Shaka baladabakapa. Sing like angels. Receive it. It's coming on you. Lift up your hands, all of you that came to the front. My God, let it fall right now. My God, let it fall right now. To those standing at the door, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. Let it fall. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Healing anointings. Take it. Make sure you are receiving it. You will write songs. Many of you will hear songs in your spirit. New songs. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, receive it, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, songs of power, songs of light, songs of grace, songs of healing. Consecration is the key. Consecration is the key to a life of true worship. Consecration. Thank God for the music dimension. But consecration is the key to a genuine life. You want to stand. Some of you are already looking for money. If this is your ambition, you will not get this Davidic anointing. It doesn't happen that way. Your heart must pant after God and after his kingdom. You must stay in the place of training until he builds you. Oh, let it fall. Yes, Lord, let it fall. Let it fall. As it were in the days of Jehoshaphat. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall dimensions lord release it from the east side of the temple let there be a releasing songs of power songs of the spirit hallelujah so that we will do mighty things for our god hallelujah please go back to your seat Thank you, Jesus. Did you bring prayer requests? Please pass them quickly. Now, all those who are sick, inside and outside, please, I'd like you to come out quickly. While this is happening, be passing the prayer request. Please, let's save time. Do it quickly. Mighty things are happening in this place. Man, de 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 boko so 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 boto 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 proto shubata. Zike te 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 preke te pele de bosh. Please don't be in a rush this night, because what God wants to do, He has not finished. Zise zise mene ke te pele de bosh. Please, you are sick. Come out, just ushers help and line them up, please. Please, 
Quickly, quickly, this is a miracle service. As you come and stand, trust God for your miracle. Trust God for your healing, please. If you are doubting, just go back to your seat. Anybody who is, please play the instruments. Anybody, mic, music director, whoever. Malia Marako Sobreti Kalabash. Those of you, those of you stay, make sure you are praying for them. As I lay my hands on you, I want to assure you. Please believe God for real miracles. Some of you as you are standing, because there is a healing river, as you are standing, you can't stand that majestic healing presence of the Holy Spirit. It's a majestic presence. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit, gentle touch, help me, Pastor. Please help me with your mic. Is flowing. Jesus, Jesus. we, we believe. Make sure you pass Jesus, your prayer request. I tell you, there is a there healing is river. Healing in your there is a day. healing river. Hey, As we worship in your presence, there is healing. Let an amosu holy spirit gentle touch is flowing. The moment Jesus, I pray for you, begin to check yourself.
go foul devil of God. There is healing in your name. There is healing in your name tonight. There is healing in your name. See, sickness broken down now. There is healing in your name. See, blind eyes open tonight. There is healing in your name. Go. Foul devil. Out. Out. Come out of her. Come out of her right now. You've oppressed this lady. Go, go, go. Go. There's no stay. The power of God is against you. Let her go. Let her go. I command restoration.
as soon as we pray on the request, I want to release breakthroughs into lives and families. This is probably one of the biggest miracles that will happen in this place tonight. Many of you don't know what a breakthrough is. The Bible says, and Abraham was old and stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. This is what we call breakthrough. Hallelujah. Please, if you have not submitted your request, let me tell you where we got the revelation of this. The Bible says, and they sent a threat letter to Hezekiah. Remember? And the Bible says, Hezekiah took the letter and came and dropped it on the altar and showed God the threatenings. And when that happened, there was wisdom that was revealed and they strategized worshippers and the Bible says that they began to fight themselves in the camp. You will see a lot of confusion as we begin to pray for this thing. I don't mean confusion here. Confusion in the camp of the enemy. Whatever request you brought in this place, I really want, many of you don't know what God is doing this night. God is setting people on fire. We have a few minutes remaining. But God will visit you. We want you to come back with evidences that God touched you. See, when you get results, it's a consolation to your Christian work. Are you listening to me? Those outside, look at some of you standing. Standing right across, I see you. God cannot allow you to go back the same way. It's impossible. You didn't come to meet an idol. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet, everybody. It's a very prophetic moment right now. As we pray, I'd like to ask the ministers, Pastor Williams. Pastor, so. Please, if you've not written your request, drop it. God is doing great things in this place. As we begin to pray on this request, Pastor. Hallelujah. Pray along with us, prophesy. Stretch your hands and pray. Tell the Lord, this is my request, O Lord. This is my request. Father, locate people. Locate people, oh God. Locate cases. There are, there are difficult cases. Cases of barrenness. Deliverances for families. Lord, this is an altar you have sanctified. In one accord we pray. Just lay your hands across it as we release the virtue of perfection. Total breakthroughs. Academic breakthroughs. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, my request in this is in this place. Locate it. Those online, we are connecting with them also in the spirit. Those following us on all of our online channels. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Release breakthroughs to families. We sanctify these requests. These Egyptians will never be seen in families and lives again. Change stories, oh God. Hallelujah. Omnipotent Father, Lord God of mercy and grace, the God who says a thing and accomplishes in the life of his children, the I am that I am, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Who is there like unto you? You are greater than the greatest. You are stronger than the strongest. 
You are mightier than the mightiest. You are the one who sits in the heavens and you made the earth your full stool. You are great. You are greatly to be praised. We thank you because of this opportunity that you have given unto us, O oh God, to bring down our needs, our supplication, our requests unto your feet. You said in your word that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly far above all we ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. We thank you, O oh God, because we know that every need that has been penned down, every request that has been written down, you have already seen it. You have already seen it. And because you have seen it, we thank you because this, this request has seen by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we see you doing great things in this place tonight. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the testimonies that are coming out from this pen down written notes. We thank you for the testimonies coming out from this. In the name of Jesus, we bless you because we know that we will come here next time to give you thanks of what you have done. Thank you Lord because every need, every need, every need here, they are met. Amen. We give you thanks. Thank you, Lord we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks, oh God, we give you thanks, Lord, we give you thanks, we give you praise, for we know that all things work together for our good, we give you thanks. We give you praise for by faith we know your grace. We see us through. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My God, as I pray, you gave me an anointing to bless, an anointing to release. Father, as many people as are in this place, inside and outside, they came here hungry. And Lord, as I speak on behalf of the government of heaven, let these words be so effectual. Let these words be fervent. Respond, O oh God. Every word I declare, let there be testimonies that will return. Every word that I'm about to declare to you, please, when I pray, I like you to shout amen with all your heart. Because I sense a very strong prophetic anointing coming upon me. I really want to speak from the depths of my heart. I don't just want you to believe it. I want you to return. The Bible says, and the 70 returned rejoicing. Hallelujah. I want to pray for families. Lift your hands. Let's start with families right now. Please, I'd like you to shout amen with all your heart. Hallelujah. Every family represented in this place, every family, any curse, any ordinance of darkness, every yoke of bondage afflicting any family, I set you free now. In the name of Jesus, I set families free now. In the name of Jesus, I set families free now. In the name of Jesus, I set families free now. In the name of Jesus, Father, Mother, Brothers, Sisters, be free, be free, be free. Be free. Be free. 
free. Be free. Be free. Anyone here, whether you or your family members, looking for a job in the mighty name that is above all names, between today and the next 40 days, I place a demand upon the heavens. Receive miracle jobs. Receive miracle job. Receive miracle job for you, for your loved ones. probation you are trusting the hand whatever it is you are doing your project things are difficult whatever academic issue tonight in the name of the Lord God of Israel the one who does wonders in this place I declare step into a season of academic victory step into a season of academic victory I release you from any kind of bondage I release you any kind of academic bondage be free be free be free Amen. hallelujah all those who are due for marriage whether you or your love your loved ones see let me tell you in this place once you are of marriageable age, you must marry. Are you hearing me? Are you listening to me? What did I say? Right. Hallelujah. Somebody married, that's why you are here. You must marry. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Right now, I speak as a servant of the living God. I've prayed about it, but I will pray again. I pray. Some of you, you are a lady, you are pretty. But no man can come around. This is a curse. Tonight I pray that your wives and your husbands, those of you who, are, who have concubines and etc. When I make the altar call, run out here. Because this is what will stop you. You are entitled to only one wife. Say amen. amen. You are entitled to only one husband. Say amen. amen. The spirit of double dating dies here tonight. Amen. Leave another sister's husband to locate her husband. Leave another brother's wife to locate him. But I pray in the name of Jesus, before the end of this year, may there be fearful or inspiring miracle marriage take it take it God told it before December 31st 2013 come back with testimonies for yourself for your loved ones we supply the resources we supply the place
Hallelujah. Any terminal disease in this place, HIV, whatever it is, Hallelujah. Infections, all kinds of satanic names, I declare right now, we curse it from the root in the name of Jesus. Anyone there whose genotype is SS or AS in the name that is above all names, be changed, be changed to AA. I change it in the name of the Lord. Receive it. Receive a change of genotype. You will come back with testimonies. Believe it. Receive it. of demonic dreams and oppressions of darkness some of you see people sleep with you some of you see all kinds of demonic things molestations of darkness i pray right now the last time you had that dream or that experience let it be the last time forever in your life i said let it be the last time forever let it be the last time forever satan i curse you I cause every soul Amen, amen, amen. All those who are students and are in final year, I declare, those who need the mercy of God for their graduation, I pray right now, let policies be changed. Let something happen in your faculty that has never happened. We release you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy restoration. Whatever it is that you have lost, whether as a result of your past or mistakes, opportunities, graces, I pray that the God who regulates times and seasons, let that season come back to your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every lecturer in this place or those who your parents are lecturers stand for them, I want to speak. There are lecturers whose promotions are overdue. Is that true? Is that true? In the name that is above all names this night, we command. Even offices that are not available, we create it for them this night. In the name of Jesus. Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph, and they brought him out of his dungeon. The king sent for Joseph. Tonight, I connect you with supernatural destiny helpers that will take you from where you are to the next level. I connect you. I call for the helpers of your destiny. Financial helpers. Marital helpers. Career help us, spiritual help us, receive their ministry in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray any project anyone is doing here, whether you or your whether building project whatever it is for you and for your families you are building a three bedroom flat that's taking over 10 years this is a curse i pray right now in the name of jesus let there be supernatural supplies the beds that brought food for the prophet i command may they locate your family i open up the heavens over your family in the name of jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the things God is doing in this season is preparing people for dimensions of prosperity that will scare people. Hallelujah. God is seriously looking for men who he will 
trust this man will not just get well they will be trained the first thing you need is the staying grace the school is not easy let me tell you the truth but happy are you when you pass through it because you will command wealth that will make you afraid i pray for you every curse of poverty and lack there are some of you who are kingdom financiers the power of god will come upon you kingdom financiers kingdom financiers kingdom financiers kingdom financiers now i pray for everyone this cause of poverty that is upon many lives and families that has closed the heaven over many people in the name of the lord jesus this night by the sure mercies of the god of david i command your heavens to be open i command your financial heavens be open be open be open be open be open be open That bring prosperity favor and wisdom hallelujah money comes through favor it is preserved through wisdom the bible says through wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established through knowledge the rooms are filled with every treasurable thing i pray let your hands receive wealth that only god can give inexplainable but undeniable receive it in the name of Jesus let me tell you brothers it is not by power when it comes to prosperity it is not by might it's by the spirit of God hallelujah two more things and we're up I want to pray for favor. This is one of the things we enjoy in abundance. Hallelujah. I cannot tell you how the favor of God works. No man can explain it. But I know it works. I know it works. I am a testament. If you believe I want you to believe many of you, you you are used to suffering you don't know what the favor of God can do some of our family members what you need is the favor of God the Bible says in Isaiah 44 verse 3 it said they got not into their land they got not the land by their possessions. Neither did their arms save them. But because you had, you showed favor towards them. Please believe. One encounter of favor. I tell you it can, it can, it can keep you in a position for a lifetime. Believe it. There is something called divine favor. What you see today is the evidence. We have never paid a dime for this venue. The last miracle service, I still don't know who paid for the venue. This is the favor of God. I want you to believe it. If you want to work for everything in your life, get set to die. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Favor. For many of you to come on you, this is what you need. I'm telling you, this is what you need. Families, what you need is favor, not stories. My God, my God. I pray in the name of Jesus the favor that is upon koinonia I take it and I release it to your life take it now take it now take it now take it now, take it now. I activate favor 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 with God favor with man favor receive it Favor. Koinonia is called the place of intimacy and partnership with the Holy Spirit. 
Hallelujah. You cannot come here tonight and not be on fire for God. You cannot be here tonight and not be on fire for the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to release grace that your spiritual life will stand strong and solid. Many of you, your prayer altars are dead. It's not because you don't love God. Hallelujah. Many of you, one leg in, one leg out. Last year, you were on fire this year. Hallelujah. Many of our mothers, fathers, people at home, our prayer life, our word life, we're looking for things that only the word of God can give us. But Jesus said to Martha, I said, one thing is needful. One thing. One thing. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Alongside with this, I want to pray for the distribution of the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Paul said, I long to come to you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. A powerless Christianity, and I'm not talking of just falling out. Christianity with results. Christianity with proofs. We have too many talkatives in the body of Christ. Inside or outside. Some of you have been crying and said, Lord, can't my life not have proofs? Can the sick be healed through my hands too? Can I not bless people and it will work for them? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. I consider it to be an all-important impartation. Please get ready because it will come upon you. Different kinds of gifts of the Spirit. Stirrings of the Spirit. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. At the shout of that name, some of you will, will be set on fire, literally. So that your spiritual life will be hot. So that God will use you and do wonders. Are you ready? Shout it with all your heart at the count of three. One. Two. Three. Take it. Lord of knowledge. Take it. Gifts of wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Inside and outside. of grace that God has given me entrepreneurial ideas that will raise financial giants lift your hands everybody in the mighty name of Jesus take it take it take it take it Jesus. take it
Hallelujah. May your life be a fruitful life. May your life be a fruitful life. May your life be a fruitful life. May God bring results to your life. To be a consolation to your Christian work. Any life that has not been experiencing results. That you have never testified. May this be your month. Any life that has not been experiencing results. May this be your month. Do you believe this? Hallelujah. I want to give you an opportunity inside and outside. If you've never given your heart to the Lord, please keep standing everybody. You've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me. Inside and outside, you are hearing my voice right now. You have seen the works of the Lord. It's time for you to get into a real relationship with God. Or for some of you, you have given your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. But you found yourself derailing. Inside and outside, the Lord is speaking to you. Mother, father, whoever. I want you to leave your seat and come out here right now. I want to lead you and reconnect you back to the king of kings. The lover of your life. Inside and outside. Right now, leave your seat and come. Koinonia, appreciate them as they come. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. They are coming. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Our mother is coming. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Outside. Don't let the devil stop you. Mother, father, whoever. Yes. It's time to surrender. Surrender. Appreciate them. It doesn't matter what your past is. God can give you a new beginning. Don't allow the person you came with to stop you. This is the greatest miracle. Another Jesus. I give Keep clapping. Keep clapping. They are still coming. The Holy Ghost is convicting them. Inside and outside. Thank you, Jesus. Be reconnected to the maker of your life. I surrender more. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to celebrate you for your bold decision for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. People close their eyes when they are about to get born again as if what they are doing is wrong. This is the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that we celebrate you. Some of you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Others have given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. I want to pray for you. The Lord loves you and he wants to make meaning out of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, all of you in front. I like you to say after me and mean it from the depths of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I thank you for dying for my sins. This night, I believe that Jesus is Savior and Lord. And I accept him. My name is in the book of life. I declare that I'm saved. The Holy Spirit is in me. Eternal life is mine. From today, I denounce sin and Satan and every past life. And I receive grace to live the victorious Christian life. My sins are washed away. It's a new beginning for me. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. You brought these ones by your spirit. You brought them to bless. You brought them to reconnect them to the maker of their lives. My God, I pray that their salvation will last. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you do mighty things through their lives. I pray that many destinies will be blessed. 
the reason and the purpose for which they came to the earth let it be discovered and maximized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray that every encumbrance everything that keeps you in the path that is not of God you are free from me today there is grace for you you will enjoy a victorious fellowship with the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord we celebrate you please I like you to follow the ushers they will have your details and will send you a text and get across to you pastor Jakes is not around but we'll send we'll make arrangements and I'll be there by God's grace to see you God bless you please tomorrow together with them all those who have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues six on the dot please be at the chapel I will be there to minister to you hallelujah six on the dot be at the chapel hallelujah praise the Lord please rise up we're closing thank you for waiting this long all those who are worshiping with us for the first time inside and outside we love you and we believe God brought you here to bless you I like you to jump on your feet and rush out here quickly celebrate them koinonia if this is your first time please inside and outside you are special we have a prayer for you God bless you God bless you God bless you God bless you all those who invited them I pray that every good thing will come into your life in the name of Jesus God bless you God bless you keep clapping they are still coming thank you thank you sirs thank you Mark thank you thank you keep clapping until they come they are special to us I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us 